When introducing nonlinear systems, we had the example of a predator prey model for zebras and lions. Without lions, the zebra population grows, but with a lot of lions, zebra population decreases. However, due to the decreasing zebra population, also the lion population decreases and the zebra population can grow again. So, what will happen in the long run? Do they both go extinct? Or do they both grow? Or do we see some periodic behavior? In order to answer this question, some careful analysis is required. Fortunately, we covered all required tools in the previous videos, so we can now analyze this problem. So, here we had our problem for the zebra population and the lion population. Uh, so, let's see what happens. First of all, we are going to compute the equilibrium points. For the equilibrium points, we first set f1 to 0, gives us x1 times 1 minus 0.5 x2 equals 0, so two solutions. Either x1 is 0 or x2 is 2. So there we have our solutions. And then uh, we set f2 to 0. First we say, okay, f2 is 0 and we pick our first solution. So f2 equals 0 and x1 equals 0. That only gives x2 equals 0, so the origin as a solution. So both extinct. And a second possibility, fortunately we have another possibility, x2 equals 2, and then setting f2 equals 2 and x2 equals 2, both of them, we get minus 1.5 plus 1 half x1 equals 0, so x1 equals 3, and we have the point 3, 2. So we have a second equilibrium point. But what happens to our second equilibrium point? If it's a repeller, maybe we are pushed to the origin and we go extinct anyway. Let's see. We have to look into the stability. For that we need our Jacobian. So we compute the derivative with respect to x1, which gives us 1 minus 1.5 x2. With respect to x2, which gives minus 1.5 x1, which comes here. And then we do the same for our f2. The der derivative with respect to x1 over here and with respect to x2 over there. So there we have our Jacobian matrix. Let's analyze the stability of the points, plugging in 0, 0. We, get, uh, we immediately see that we get a settle point, because our eigenvalues are positive and negative. So the origin will be a saddle. That is sort of good news. What about the point 3, 2? Plugging in those numbers, uh, we get this Jacobi matrix. <coughs> we compute the eigenvalues over here, and we get fully imaginary eigenvalues. So linearly we get the center. So linearly we get some periodic behavior around the center. But wait a minute, we have to be a bit careful here, because linearly a center doesn't tell us uh, in principle anything about the nonlinear behavior. So we have to look a bit further. For the idea we take a look at the linear problem, we translate, setting u equals x1 minus 3 and v equals x2 minus 2. So now the point u equals 0 and v equals 0 corresponds to the equilibrium point 3, 2. Then we compute du dt equals dx dt, and we get uh, this mess over here, and dv dt is of course the same as dx2 dt, and we get this mess over here. And now we see if we linearize du dt, we have a, 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 a u plus 3, and the minus 3 cancels out, uh, and linearly we have a, a minus a 1.5 v left because the u is cancelled out by the minus half times 2. So linearly the u dt equals minus 1.5 v. Similarly, linearly the v dt equals 0.5 times u. Gives us of course exactly those uh, purely imaginary eigenvalues. And now we can do the following trick. We can find the trajectories by dividing them dv dt over du dt gives us dv du. That will show us how the trajectories look, li look like. So we um, clean up a bit of the mess here, and then we see that we have minus 6 times dv equals 2u times du. And we see we have a differential equation in u and v which we can solve. After integration we get minus 3v squared plus a constant equals u squared. So u squared plus 3v squared is constant. 
So in the linear case, what do we have in the UV plane? We get ellipses. So we have a center and around that we have ellipses. Okay, not so surprising because linearly we knew what was going on. But now we can apply the same trick non-linearly. So we have again the UDT and the VDT, almost the same, but now some non some additional nonlinear terms. And again, here we can compute DVDU uh, by co dividing DVDT by the UDT. And it's convenient to multiply here with V to get this term over here, and multiply here with U over U to get this term over here, in order to uh, find a separate differential equation with V's over here and U's over here. Uh, and we can solve this differential equation. We have to do a bit of work. Uh, add and subtract 2 and minus 2 here, and 6 and minus 6 over here, in order to get uh, 1 minus 2 <coughs> times 1 over v dv, and 1 half, and you have 2u plus 6 divided by the minus 6 plus 2u, so minus 1 here, plus some other term. And now we can integrate the 1 becomes a v, the 1 over v plus 2 becomes a ln of v plus 2. Uh, the 1 half remains. The minus 1 becomes a minus u. And the uh, uh, 6 over 6 plus 2u becomes a ln of 6 plus 2u. And uh, then we can bring everything to the same side in order to obtain a parametric equation in the <coughs> uv plane. Now, how does this look? Uh, we can actually sketch uh, this equation. Of course, for this one, we need uh, a, a computer software in order to sketch this curve. It's not, not so easy. However, if you use this software, we can see how the parametric curves looks like. Not exactly an ellipse anymore, but something which quite closely resembles an ellipse. So actually, we have something like this. So what happens? Uh, first, if we start out here, for example, the uh, zebra population increases, then there's a lot of food for the lions, so their population increases. But then there are a lot of lions, so zebras do not like that, so their zebra population decreases to a point over here. Now we have a small zebra population, no food anymore, lion population decreases, and then again the zebra population flourishes and they increase. And so we get some kind of periodic behavior around the equilibrium point 3, 2. So both zebras and lions in this uh, model living happily ever after.